Good evening, folks. Kent Hoven here and the crew at Dinosaur Adventureland, all dressed up in our Lions Metal Roofing shirts. Look at that. We sell metal roofing. Brother Lions gave us a train load of metal to finish all the buildings down here. Uh, did you get uh, Bill Nye, the uh, engineer guy over there? You didn't get him? Oh, come, on, come on, Nick. You know. <laughs> anyway, thank you, Brother Lions. If you want to get some metal roofing for your place, uh, get a hold of him. He's been, what a blessing he's been. And the hat. This is like his like third you. time doing it. This is his third time. He's been a great blessing. Is thank you, Brother. Bristol, huh? Bristol, he's in Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, you guys drove up day before yesterday all day, came back all day in the thunderstorm pulling the trailer. And they're still working. And they're still working. And the van's got 301,000 miles probably by now. Yay. Yeah. Yay. Thank you for joining us, folks. It is June 18th, 2018. We got our wise old shop manager, Bill. You've been a blessing. We've been advertising for you for a long time. God bless. Amen. Oh, I can't believe the progress out there. You're working these young guys like slaves, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Remington was here last week and went back to Burlington. Yeah, worked him half to death. And, uh, okay. He tells me his name is uh, Lady Die. but I call him Elvis. Lady Di, you missed it. We just scanned the crowd and got everybody's face on here, and we missed yours. You're going to get her, Nick? She says no. Okay. They do that. You know, on the Internet, they have Lady Die sightings. They talk about we saw it. <laughs> like, it's, like it's rare. Yeah. Okay. okay. It is rare. She doesn't like okay. it on the camera. If you want to bring a group down for summer camp, come on down. Let's see, we got the mics on. Okay. Solar panel expert, still looking for that. Uh, cabins, th those are fun. Jeff, you liking that cabin down there? Yeah, it's real. Isn't that amazing? This is a 12 foot ceiling, lets the hot air rise and rise, fall right out of the building and uh, works out great. Abby, Abby's birthday today, she's two. Yay. She went down with me to feed the fish this morning. Awesome. There we go. Let's see. Electric, plumbing, sheetrock, paint. There's a million things need to be done. Bunkhouse 3 getting close. Bunkhouse 4. You need air conditioning in there. Somebody just drop a riding lawnmower out of heaven. We need a riding lawnmower. We, yeah. We got a bush hog. Got a brush hog for the tractor, yeah. And a, pu and a push mower. Well, somewhere in between. Well, we need a riding lawnmower with an operator. He a zero turn. Yeah. A zero turn. No, we're not just... <laughs> Just, just, you can sit on. just sit on, okay. All right. Um, let's see. I uh, did all that. We're looking for one of these inflatable things to jump on. Freddie's going to launch your kids off to the moon, right? Amen. Hey, That'd be great. Look at that. Unbelievable. We, we need one of these. Lady Die, would you do it? Would you do it, Lady Die? Oh, no. Okay. And one of these. If you'd like to help us, uh, who was it? Anna talking today on the way home from church? No, somebody was about Cindy, uh, about the. We're open for free, and she gives tours all the time around here, and people are just stunned. Like, free? Yeah. It's because people support us, the 777 Club. Uh, somebody texted on the Internet and said, that's a satanic number. Get a job. It, it, comes after, it comes after 776. Okay. Ah, oh, thank you, ma'am. You're a Gentile and a scholar. Okay. Uh, so it's not a satanic number. Uh, picked at random, okay? But we're looking for people who want to support us for a dollar a day, 31 bucks a month. Call Anna or uh, Cindy or anybody but me, because I don't have any clue what's going on. I take all the credit, but they do all the work, okay? <laughs> you join now, 777 Club, dollar a day to help us stay open for free. Go to Dr. Dino at drdino.com and make any checks to CSE. Okay. Uh, oh, that was 682. 682, enter. There. Philip and his daughter Taurus, nine, from Mobile, visiting tonight. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Hang around much longer. We'll put you to work. It happens to everybody around here. Looking for rocks and minerals for our dis anything cool to put on display in, uh, in our museum. People are coming from all over, so we want them to say, oh, wow, that's cool, and we'll use it to win them to the Lord. The Master Lego Builder coming the end of the month. If you want to help us get a bunch of Legos, we need that. Let's see. We did all that. Lake toys. Always looking for new stuff for the lake. Uh, we talked about that. Okay. I posted, and Nick did a great job editing, in spite of the fact that we lost the audio and had to go back and refigure it out. That took a little thinking, but uh, got the audio for the interview I did with Robert Sengenis, the guy who wrote the book Flat Earth, Flat Wrong. I was immediately accused of not accepting the flat earth theory over money. You know, the atheists do this with me. Hovind doesn't accept evolution. As if it's obvious it's true, you just have to accept it. There's another choice, you know. It's not true. But that thought does not cross their brain, okay? 
not capable of thinking that thought. So in their mind, we know it's flat. Now Hovind just has to accept it. There's another thought, guys. You're wrong. I mean, like wrong, okay? Uh, so I have very reluctantly, <coughs> after, uh, after much contemplation and prayer, decided I'm going to accept their challenge. The Bible says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So uh, Rob Skiva, and who did, said the same thing, Hovind, he's afraid if he accepts the flat earth, he'll lose all his support and he won't have any money coming in, as if that's what motivates me. Lady Di, how long have you known me? Long time. 14, 15 years? Yes. I, this is not for money for me, okay? Yes. If the flat earth were true, I would jump on. I'd be the best supporter you've ever had. But... You guys are making one of the worst enemies you've ever had, because I'm going to jump on this one with both feet, okay? The earth is round, and your flat earth theory is dumb, and I'm going to fix it. I'm going to accept your challenge and debate all of you at the same time on a couple simple conditions. Okay, the Bible says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. You are bearing false witness against me. That is not what motivates me. If it was true, I would preach it. When I switched from pre-trib to post-trib, I lost just about every Baptist church support that I ever had. I don't care. Pre-trib's not true. I'm going to preach the truth. Okay. The Bible says, Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren. I think I'm older than most of you guys claiming the earth is flat. I'd be glad to... But be careful how you rebuke me. I'm not doing this for money. Against an elder, receive not an accusation, but before two or three witnesses. You're accusing me of something, and you're falsely accusing me. You're violating the, one of the Big Ten Commandments. Okay. I accept the debate challenge with any number of evolutionists on some simple conditions. I've done this for 30 years, okay? I'll take on all the evolutionists at the same time if I get half the time and we discuss one topic at a time and I want them to clearly define their position. What exactly do you mean by evolution? I don't want to fight against a cloud. I want to fight against something solid I can sink my teeth into. And what exactly are you saying here, okay? Now, <clears throat> That's why I define, the first thing I do in my debates with evolution is, is define the word. What do you mean, evolution? Is it cosmic, chemical, stellar, organic, macro, or micro? What they're going to do is give you a thousand examples of micro, <coughs> good editing, and try to get you to believe that that is somehow evidence for everything else, and it's not. So, I accept the challenge of all you flat earthers at the same time. We'll have a debate on a couple simple conditions. I get half the time. We discuss only one topic at a time. Which of, which of your best evidences do you have for flat earth? Pick one or two or five or ten, but just one topic at a time we're going to discuss. I want you to clearly define your position. Exactly which map and model are you defending? I will defend this model right here, which you can buy at Walmart for seven bucks or ten bucks. The earth is a little less than 8,000 miles in diameter. It turns slowly once a day, and it circles around the sun at an orbit, a tilt 23 and a half degrees from its plane of its orbit. I will defend that model against all comers. That is the correct model. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we do the debate on our channel with Nick controlling the audio, so neither side can interrupt or go off topic. If either of us start bringing up three or four more topics besides the one we're discussing that minute, you shut it off. Fair enough? Fair enough. Fair enough. Okay. The Flat Earthers will submit their answers to my questions below that I'm about to give you. And we will discuss these topics only for the first debate. And then we'll go on to number two if we have to. I think this is a complete waste of time, but I'm going to do it out of Christian love. Okay. Flat Earthers accused me, including Rob Skiba a couple days ago on the video. I just, somebody sent me the link to it. I don't, I don't think I've ever met Rob Skiba. I don't know. If I have, Rob, you said I'm, you're, I influenced you greatly. Good. Now I'm going to try to influence you again to get off this dumb kick you're on, okay? Uh, because of the love of money. I'll make my position crystal clear. The Earth is a ball spinning slowly once a day. It's tilted 23 and a half degrees as it orbits the sun once a year. That is my position, and I'm not paid to say that by anybody. I've answered the biblical side of this topic five times on this channel. We did this with uh, Edric, uh, what, two years ago in uh, Pensacola. Where, Pensacola. Yeah. I've done one just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. The Bible does not teach the Earth is flat like you guys say, okay? talked about the four corners of the earth. Is it a tetrahedron? talked about God having wings like a chicken. Is God a chicken? Does he have feathers? We talked about all that. I'm not going to get into that. This is going to be the scientific part. Okay. From San Diego, California to Holton, Maine is 3,344 miles driving or 2,745 miles flying as the crow flies. Okay. That is the distance from San Diego to Holton, Maine. We're going to use that as our ruler. <coughs> Across Australia, 
it is 2,861 miles driving or 2,241 miles flying because you don't have to, you know, take the curves in the road. Your flat earth map shows Australia 5,500 miles wide. I simply took the distance from Holton, Maine to California, used that as my pattern and cut and pasted it and copied it on your map, your flat earth map. You are showing Australia to be 5,500 miles wide. That is twice as wide as it really is. Is this the map you're going to defend? If this is not the map, you, before we do the debate, you send me the map of the flat earth that is to scale that you are going to defend. To video support at Dr. Dino. To video support at Dr. Dino, okay? Is, so I just took this little arrow, 20, it represents 2,745 miles, there it is across the United States, cut and paste and copied it. You have Australia 5,500 miles wide. I would, I will cont I'll contest that and say that is not correct. You are wrong. Wrong, okay? From Tunis, uh, Algeria, down to Cape Town, South Africa, is 6,800 miles driving or 4,895 miles flying. That's what it shows on the globe. And that's what it actually is if you want to fly it. Now, your map, though, shows that distance at uh, 6,300 miles. And the, 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 with uh, 4,400 miles wide for Africa. It's actually 4895. You're 500 miles off. Is, is this the map you're going to defend? If this is not it, send me the one you will defend. And I taught math for years. I can do it with trigonometry or algebra or geometry. I can calculate what distances your little continents are on your map. I want to see your map that you can defend and say this is the scale, this is the size of everything, and the distance between things. Okay? Africa is actually uh, 4,600 miles wide. You have it at uh, 6,300 miles wide. You're way off on your map, okay? South America is 3,300 miles wide and 4,700 miles tall, if I can use the term tall, okay? Now, your map doesn't show that. It's not too far off, but it's much wider than it should be. The distance from Sydney, Australia to Montevago, Uruguay is 11,000 kilometers or 7,360 miles. There are airplanes that fly there. Now, not many. People say, well, there aren't many flights. That's because not many people live down there. Duh. And the ones that do live there are poor and don't want to fly anywhere. They're lucky to get their milk. <laughs> okay. So don't give me this airplanes don't fly there. They can and they have flown between those two cities, and it is 7,300 miles. Now, your flat earth map shows the distance from Sydney, Australia to Montevago, Uruguay as way different than that. All right here shows it at 16,000 miles. Somebody is wrong. Now, if you want to debate me, I want an answer to this. Why do you show it at 16,000 miles apart on your map? Which map are you defending? I want a copy of that before we do the debate. Just like the atheist, what exactly do you mean by evolution? Well, things change. Okay, are there limits to the change? I, I, don't I do that in all my debates? I've had, what, 142 of them now? That's perfectly fair. I don't want to fight against smoke or a cloud. What exactly are you defending? Is, if this is not the map, send it to me. I want to see it. Flat Earth map shows the air miles from Johannesburg to Montevago, Uruguay at about 11,500 miles. Let me get that across there. The actual distance is 4,900 miles. They can fly there, okay, to South, to South Africa. Somebody is wrong, and it is you Flat Earthers that are wrong. You're wrong, okay? Now, your Flat Earth map shows the sun and moon orbiting. You can buy little models of the flat earth with the dome, and they've got the sun and the moon on opposite ends of a stick circling around. Guys, it is possible for the moon to go in front of the sun and have an eclipse, or vice versa. The earth to go between the two and get an eclipse on the moon. How does this work on your flat earth map? What exactly is it orbiting? And if the sun is going in a circle, it is violating Newton's laws of motion, which says an object will stay in motion until it's acted upon by an outside force. Like if you're swinging a ball on a string over your head, the string is the outside force pulling it in every time. If you let go, it'll take off in a straight line. That's how David killed Goliath. What is the force causing your sun and moon to change directions constantly? Not only does it make a circle, the whole circle moves back and forth with the seasons. That is what you teach. What is the force changing the direction of the sun and the moon? And I don't want, I, I want a physical science answer. I can handle that. I taught physical science for 15 years, okay? What is the exact size and altitude of the sun and the moon? One of them said it's 27 miles in diameter, okay? How high is it? 
And on your earth, and I'll draw it all out to scale, on your flat earth, if you have a 27 mile sun, whatever distance above, why can't we always see it all the time? Wouldn't matter how far away it is. If the earth is flat, it could be a glowing ball. A long ways away, we w there can't be such a thing as darkness. I don't get it. I want to see you give me the exact numbers. How high is it? How big around is it? How fast is it moving? Does it change speeds? Because the circle's bigger out here in the wintertime going around the Tropic of Capricorn. So what is speeding the sun up and then slowing it back down? It was constantly changing directions and speeds with your model. I think that is flat stupid, but we'll debate that, okay? I want to know what's causing this. And I get animated about this when they say, I'm doing this for money. Sheesh, how thick is this flat earth? I would like you to send me a model and tell me how thick it is. How thick is the flat earth? Your flat earth map show a dome over the top. What makes this dome stay up, okay? Where exactly is the edge? Has anybody ever seen this dome or the edge of this dome? What is it made out of? Tell me your details on this dome. How thick is this flat earth? I'd like to know, you know, if I drilled a hole, would I eventually come out? And is there an accurate, is this an accurate scale model? Is this what you believe? If not, send me one or tell me where I can buy one. I want an accurate scale, mo uh, scale model. I want to know what I'm fighting against. How do we get falling stars too? How do you get meteors come through? I don't know. Self-healing dome. Okay. <laughs> Why can't everyone see the sun all the time? What is on the other side of this flat earth? Has anyone ever been there? If not, why not? I would like to know your answers to these things. That's very simple. Okay. I accept your challenge. You guys have been after me for a long time. Rob, I don't think I've ever met you. Call me. You can call the office, 855-BIG-DINO, extension 3. I will answer the phone. If I'm available, I get a million calls a day. And let's you and I talk. Come on down. I'll take you out to dinner. But brother, you are on the wrong side of this one, and you're leading thousands of people into a theory that is just plain stupid. Stop it, okay? I know you're trying to defend the Bible, and I greatly appreciate that. I'm trying to defend it also. But this, you have gone off on a rabbit trail, and this rabbit is... He's retarded. Okay, stop. Okay, he's ch you're chasing him through the swamp. Okay, now, back to the Bible study. <clears throat> Nehemiah, chapter 12. Amen. Amen, okay. <laughs> now, these are the priests and the Levites that went up with Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel. And it gives a bunch of names here. And again, I, I don't, I'm not going to read all these names, okay? Nehemiah, chapter 12, lists all these guys who were chief of the priests, which was over the Thanksgiving. They had one guy in charge of giving Thanksgiving. I think that's awful. I mean, that's, that's awesome. I'll edit that out. I think that's awesome. <laughs> okay? I'm wound up. Boy. Anyway, never mind. Uh, deep breath. Uh, deep breath. Deep breath. Okay. <sighs> Take a drink. Take a drink. Okay. <laughs> and tell him I left water. The what now? That's water. That's water. Yeah. Don't start a rumor, okay? We're not a I saw Hovind drinking purple <laughs> Kool-Aid. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, so... It, Somebody was in charge of giving Thanksgiving. You ought to have that. You dads ought to make sure your house takes time with your kids and your family to do some Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord. They had all kinds of feasts and parties in the Bible where they were reminded of things God did for them. That's the purpose of the holidays, you know. <clears throat> Take charge, Dad, and make, make sure your family has some time of Thanksgiving. Thank you, God, for this food. Thank you, God, for this car, whatever. Just thank Him. So it lists a bunch more names in verse 11 through 20. I'm not going to read all these guys' names. And all this is written in the book of the Chronicles. Now, chronos is the word for time, okay? A timekeeper, a chrono, ch chronometer. There's two books in the Bible called First and Second Chronicles, where they keep track of the times. It's basically the list of who's king and what he did during his reign. And Chronicles is more the political, it, it would be kind of like the records they would keep at the courthouse. You know, King David was king for 40 years, and then Solomon became king. It's more of a chronological record, as opposed, it does contain a lot of stories in there, but... <clears throat> First and second kings is basically the same guys, only much more from a uh, non-political perspective. This is uh, this would be the uh, sa same stories, many times different details added in. So anyway, so they they wrote their names in the book of the Chronicles. They kept track of all this stuff, just like most courthouses do in most counties. Keep track of you know records and births and marriages and deaths. Okay. So it lists a bunch more guys. Their job was to praise and give thanks according to the commandment of David, the man of God. David, 400 years earlier, had said they should give praise, or 500 years earlier, and so they're doing it. Praise God. And they had some guys in charge of keeping the ward at the threshold of the gates. That'd be, I would assume to be lock up the city at night. You ought to have somebody in charge of lock up. Who closes the doors? Who opens the doors in the morning? So, see, this, this goes into <coughs> the bigger picture in Nehemiah. People were assigned a job, a duty. Everybody ought to have a job. Who milks the chickens in the morning around here? 
You do, okay? That rooster, you got to squeeze really hard to get an egg out of him, but, but uh, squeeze him hard, please, okay? He's attacked three people now. Uh, anyway, people ought to have their job, and you should be faithful to just do your job. If you some, nobody should have to check up on you all the time. I don't want to have to remember all that stuff. I got other things I want to think about and work on, okay? <laughs> I don't want to worry about milking the chickens or washing the dishes or, you know, whatever. <laughs> Just do your job, okay? So at the dedication of the wall of Jerusalem, they sought the Levites out of all their places. Remember, uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob had 12 sons. One of them was Levi. And later, God said, I'm going to swap you all the firstborn. Instead of the firstborn of every family, I'm going to take all the Levites, and they're going to be my priests. So that all took place in the book of Leviticus. Numbers? Somewhere in there. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> but, so the Levites were the guys in charge of all the temple worship, all the priests. They would be, take care of all the teaching the Bible to everybody, keeping track, making copies of the Bible. They had a full-time full -time crew of people just doing those religious things that for the, what we would call the church duties, okay? The pastor, the youth director, etc. So they kept it with gladness, both with thanksgiving and singing and cymbals and psalteries and harps. One guy told me, his wife must be an angel. She's always up in the air harping about something. Uh, I don't know what you mean. I, never mind. Okay. And the sons of the singers gathered themselves together. So if some people, their full-time job was just singing. I think that's great. Professional choir. The Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. Have you heard them sing? Gee, that's incredible. I love listening to that stuff, you know. Full-time singing. They don't want me in their choir. Okay. So I brought up the princess. I do get a lot of requests, okay, but I sing anyway. Uh, then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall and appointed two great companies of them that gave thanks. He brought all the princes up and said, okay, divide up in two teams. You guys are going to give thanks to God. Probably in song. Half the book of Psalms is written like that where you can sing it, giving thanks to God. So and he talked about all the brothers, the musical instruments that David had made. They brought them all out. And he came with them. Nehemiah came with them. So they, the wall's done. They're getting all the duties divvied out. And Nehemiah came with them. And they had a big party and dedicated everything to God with thanksgiving. And they went to the gates above Ephraim and the fish gate and the tower gate. And they stood still in the prison gate. I've been to that one a bunch of times. So. Still in there for a long time. A whole bunch of them, yeah. Um, <laughs> so stood the two companies of them that gave thanks in the house of God and I and the half of the rulers with me. Boy, that's great when your politicians have an attitude of praising God. Boy, if America had godly leaders, it would solve so many problems. But see... The Bible says, for the transgression of the land, many are the princes thereof. The more wicked the people get, the more politicians and rulers we have, and the more money it costs us, and higher taxes and everything else goes. We deserve God's judgment. The problem with America is the Christians not doing their job. That's the problem. And the priests and all these guys came up. Also that day, they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. You know, it's something, when you give... It just makes you happy. There have been several times in my life when I've helped the church or helped some ministry do something. A friend of mine was buying property to build a Christian camp in Mexico, and I gave him a bunch of money. And uh, it, it's fun to give. I love to give. I kind of hate being on the receiving end the last couple of years, having to say, hey, please send money to help us. I'd much rather just give. But I do. Everything we get from my video sales and book sales, I give it all to the ministry. So that's where it all goes, okay? Uh, by the way, Ernie says we're 9,000 in debt now on the credit card, so whoever's got one, quit spending uh, <laughs> until we get some more in. But uh, it, there's just there's great joy in giving. It's just something about doing it. And so, so many people miss this all their life. They're worried about what can I get, what can I get? And you're missing the whole point of the Christian life. Okay. So, and Judah uh, rejoiced for the priests, priests and the Levites that they waited. They, all got, they were happy about finally accomplishing this job. Like we've been building Dinosaur Adventureland here, and it's just so fun to see the families come through and see lives changed. It's just a blast here. So, in the days of David of Asa, and Asaph of old, they were chief of singers and songs of praise. You can read Nehemiah, mostly a bunch of names and the chronology of these guys. But there's a lot in there about the singing and giving thanks. And all Israel, in the days of Zerubbabel and in the days of Nehemiah, gave the portions of the singers and the porters every day his portion, and they sanctified holy things unto the Levites, and the Levites sanctified them unto the children of Aaron. How long did this last? Everybody was doing their job all the days of Zerubbabel. But we'll see later. Nehemiah left. Remember, he, the king said, how long are you going to be gone? He appointed a time. He went, he built the wall, and then he said, look, guys, i got to go back to Persia. And everything fell apart. 
That's so tragic when somebody's trying to build something for the Lord and he's got to stay there and babysit it because he can't find faithful people that'll just say, I'll do it. I'll do it. Even if you're gone, I'll do it. It all fell apart when he left. We'll see that in the next chapter. Nehemiah had to come back and straighten it all out again. All I've ever prayed for is I want faithful people to say, hey, I'll do the job even whether you're here or not. You don't have to watch me. I'm going to do it. Yay. God's the one you ought to be wanting to please. God's watching. So Nehemiah chapter 13, and then we're going to start a whole new series. Uh, I can't, I'm not going to announce it yet. We haven't got a name for it yet, but Nick's going to be pretty cool. You, uh, we'll get into that. One more chapter in Nehemiah, and then we'll start. Now, <clears throat> we will never be done working around here. If you're bored, want to come down, bring a hammer. We have mucho to duo down here. <laughs> it's like endless. And I wake up at 2 in the morning thinking up whole new ideas, like, hey, we could... Whoa, we could do that. <laughs> I write it down, don't I? It's, it's endless around here. We, we want to stay open for free, but that, of course, requires, you know, people support us. And so, if believe me, if we had too much money, we wouldn't put it in our pockets. We'd find something else. Like, hey, let's go build another dinosaur adventure land in, you know, Hong Kong or something. Your check bounced last week. Your check bounced last week. <laughs> so... Somebody was asking me, talking today to somebody about what would you do if you had, you know, what's the goal here? Well, I want to build a cool place so we can reach the world, but I want to encourage thousands of other people to do this in their backyard. Doesn't have to be huge, doesn't have to cost $100 million. One guy in Wisconsin did one in the basement of his house. He had a split level house, and so he dedicated the whole basement to be a creation museum and give tours of the place. Right. It was cool. Three bedroom house, normal size house. And the whole thing was dedicated to a creation museum in his base. I don't know if he still does or not, but... Isn't there a guy traveling around, too, that has a van? There ought to be thousands of these kind of ministries. Keep it simple, yeah. Anyway, we want to help. Give me a call, 855-BIG-DINO, extension 3, and I'll talk to you if I get if I got the phone. Give us a thumbs up, like us. It's hot in here. We're getting out of here. Subscribe, share. Subscribe, share, and... and uh, get uh, tell, Call Brother Lyons at Lyons Metal Roofing and say, thank you for helping Dinosaur Adventure Land. He would not let us pay him, so... You order your next load of metal from him or get a, order a big building. They do m monster buildings, you know, whole churches. Hold it up again. Oh, oh, Lions. Uh, there we go. Yay, Brother Lions. Okay. Bristol, All right. Tennessee. Ten Bristol, Tennessee. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. Bye.